What is up, Pyromaniacs? Pyrostasis here. We're back in the world of Beyond Reality, and uh, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Uh, we're making some progress. Things are going, but we're not making mana nearly fast enough. Not at all. Now, some of you guys are going to see this contraption here and wonder what the hell this is. I'm going to show you guys here in a second. Now, right now, the issue that we've got going is we're just not producing really any mana at all. I mean, we are producing, but it's, it's just not... It's not any meaningful quality. I mean, even all our quantity, even all of these down here are just, they're just not producing much. I mean, you can see right here, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's pitiful. It's sad. It, it just, it, the wizard in me just weeps for the production. I mean, here we are, you're watching just, just nothing, just nothing at all. And it's, it's, it's too slow. It's too slow. So we need to speed things up. Now we're going to have to move off of the water plants. Uh, I will be coming down here eventually and completely disassembling this area down here because uh, it's it's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Uh, but for now, we're going to let it run because it's it's better than nothing. So what we've done here, and I have to give a shout out to, uh, I believe his name was Jack. Hang on, let me pull up my Twitter real quick. I have to give him a shout out real fast. Do, 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 do. Uh, his name is Jack the Hammer. All right, so shout out to Jack the Hammer for this idea. Now, I've modified it slightly, but uh, he linked me to a YouTube video that was that was uh, showing something very similar to this. Now, what basically we were doing previously is I had a uh, hopper on here, and I was going to set up some complex uh, redstone setup to do it, and that thing's driving me nuts, so we're, we're just going to get rid of it because it's off the off the map uh but he he's found a video that uses uh steve's factory manager now for those of you guys who don't know steve's factory manager is the same guy who made steve's carts um and steve's carts 2 which is in this mod pack or in this mod pack uh but this right here this factory manager what it basically does is it gives you the, the factory manager is amazing um the factory thing it has some ridiculous power but this one right here is the inventory manager now, to make the inventory manager, let me go ahead and show you guys that real quick. To make the inventory manager, uh, all you need is two pieces of stone, a piston, a redstone block, and some iron. A uh, redstone block, you just put nine redstone in the compressor, it'll make it. Piston is vanilla. Most of you probably know how to do that by now. Uh, and then you just combine all that and you get the little inventory manager. Uh, you put that between the block that you want to hold the inventory. We're using barrels. Um, we're gonna be using an advanced barrel here in a bit, but for right now we're just using a basic standard barrel, uh, and we will we'll kick that up here in a few to using a barrel that links to another barrel that'll be set up by our tree farm. But we're not we're not there yet. Um, all right, so let me show you guys how to set this up. Now this is fairly complicated. If you've never messed with this before, you're gonna see all these little symbols, and you're gonna be like, "What the hell is all of this stuff?" Um, there's a ton of different things here, but the key thing is you want an input, you want an output, and you want a trigger. Okay, so these are the three buttons you want to push. All right. Now it doesn't necessarily matter what order these are in. You can set them up pretty much anywhere. You can you can move them. It it doesn't matter. I just like them this way because it's pretty easy to see. Uh, whoops, it's pretty easy to see how they're set up, and you can go this way. So let's start with the trigger. What is the trigger? The trigger is what causes it to do whatever it's going to do. So you want to come up here to the interval, and this is how often it does whatever it does. So we've got it set for 20 seconds. Um, it, I think it's actually about 28 seconds to 30 seconds for this to all burn down, but I've got it set for 20 seconds, so it's a little early. Um, we can actually set that. I think I may actually change it to 25 now that I know what I know. Uh, and then you wanna set it to an interval. You can also set it to redstone controlled or block update detector. Uh, you want it on the interval because you want it to be 25 seconds. And you can, you can adjust with these other options here and get some crazy stuff. We're not messing with that. Okay, so once you've got that, you wanna drag the interval to the input. Now the input is really the only one here that's doing anything. That's, uh, that's this little box up here. So open up the input, and here you're gonna select your inventories. Now these are all the inventories that are touching it. So you can see we've got the open crate and we've got the better barrel. You can select either one you want. We're just using the barrel, okay? So with the barrel selected, you want to come down here and you want to select the face of the barrel that you want to touch. So we want to pull from the bottom of the barrel because it's attached to the bottom. Uh, we could do it from the top of the barrel. Um, I don't think you can pull from north, south, east, west, but I, I could be wrong. Uh, then you want to come down here to the items. Now, 
we only want to pull this item out of here. Now, granted, uh, you may not have to select this, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure you have to because the logic gets a little funky otherwise. Uh, so whitelist, and then you want to just click on a question mark and you can type anything in here like NEI. Now, I chose uh, charcoal. Whoops, let me pull it back up. So you type in charcoal and it's going to pull the list. Um, I'm going to do it again so you guys can see charcoal boom and you select that and that's going to select it now once it's selected you want to whoops damn it once it's selected let me pull that back up you want to right click on it once it's right clicked you've got the option here so you want to specify an amount so we want to pull 16 at a time right now and make sure that it's set on fuzzy detection if it doesn't say fuzzy detection then it can be it may not work. So set it up for fuzzy detection, then just click the go back menu and then just click right here. All right, so basically what that's gonna do is once a trigger triggers every 16 seconds, it's gonna pull all the charcoal here. Now you can set it for any amount that you want. For me, I have 16 plants, so I want it to yank 16. You can set it for five to 10, whatever the hell you want. Then you wanna make sure that the trigger is attached to the input and then you wanna make sure the input is attached to the output. Now for the output, it's basically the exact same thing in reverse. So we have the open crate selected. We are putting in to the top of it and it doesn't really matter what we put in. I've got blacklist selected because we're not messing with items. We're just literally taking from the input and shoving it in here so we don't have to do any selection there. So once that's set up, we just put stuff up here in the barrel and every 25 seconds out the bottom here, it should drop 16 items at once. Now we're gonna have to wait a few minutes because it's probably in the middle of its cycle. Uh, but here in a sec, it should spit 25 or 16 pieces out the bottom. And again, it's on a 25 second delay. So there you go. If you want to set your counter, you can see all of them have just kicked on. Now they're all spitting in over here. Now, unlike the water stuff, you will actually be able to see these update. Uh, you can see that they're updating right here. These are pulling in more. You can see that's actually increasing. You see this is increasing and decreasing. So you're actually seeing some mana coming in. And uh, it's not insanely fast, but you can pretty much see a tick if you keep usually a couple times per, yep, see, it just bumped. And then right over here, you can see that's bumping. So you can see it's much faster. You can see we've just dropped another stack of 25 down and it's basically gonna keep, or 16 down. It's gonna keep doing that periodically. And the reason I've got it to set for 25 seconds is so we don't end up with a ton of it laying on the ground because you really don't want that. Now you can increase that. I probably will increase it to about 30 seconds, maybe 28 seconds. That way we don't have it stacked up because this way, the way it's going right now, it will accumulate on the ground over time and become a problem. So I don't really want that. So it looks like our timing needs to be adjusted slightly. So we're gonna come up here to the trigger, we're gonna come up here to the interval, and we're gonna go ahead and set that for about 30 seconds. And we're gonna see if that works a little bit better. That way we don't have anything laying on the ground uh, and we don't end up you know, losing our setup. If we're a little inefficient, that's fine, especially since there's a little lag on the server. Um, It'll, it'll work out fine. So the problem that we're running into now is, yes, this is great, but we don't have enough charcoal. I mean, we've only got three stacks of 64 in here plus 16. That's not going to last long, and we're going to run out. And the reason we need all this mana, by the way, is I need it for the Terra Shatter. Uh, this thing is one mana hungry son of a bitch, and we're looking for diamonds right now. So I want to show you guys uh, some of the setups here uh, that I've been, oh God, um, shit. I want to show you guys how far I have been mining down here to give you guys kind of an idea of how far we've been going. And th this is just some of this. This is all at height 12-ish, uh, give or take. Uh, in Greg Tech, things spawn, uh, diamonds spawn between 8 and 20. So you, you guys kind of get the idea here how far we've gone, okay? This is a pretty big hole. I have actually gone... I started here, I went all the way over to here, then down, then back all the way out to here, and then I got attacked by monsters, so I had to backtrack. We went down, bumped into a dungeon, and then I've come north. So that gives you kind of an idea of the area, the, the, the space that we've gone. And I haven't found a single diamond, not a one. Uh, I have found a bunch of veins. I mean, this is a redstone and ruby ore vein, which is kind of nice, but 
it's it's not doing us much good. I mean, it's it's something, but it's not what we're looking for. Now, granted, I could go back to our coal vein and I could just mine all of the coal and I could come back and compress it and we'd get plenty of coal or diamonds that way, but it's very, very, very inefficient. Not only that, but I'm burning just a ridiculous amount of coal that way and, and I'd like to kind of hang on to my coal because as you guys can see, we kind of need it for other things. So I really don't want to burn that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up an automated tree farm. Now, at the moment, we don't have all of the stuff necessary. Whoops, went down too many. Uh, but we're getting there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn sound back on now. Hopefully, hopefully that little ma little bouncing bastard that was driving us crazy is gone. All right. So this over here is going to be my tree farm. Now, let me go ahead and chop this down. You can see that's two blocks high. That's three. That's four. That's five. Uh, as far as I can tell, oak trees, unless you get that really nasty one, are only five high, uh, which is pretty good. That, that's easy. That makes it that makes it very easy for us to handle. Uh, if they were, well, actually, it looks like that one might have been six high. I'm not sure. So five to six high. The reason that's important to us is I need to know the height of this thing because we're going to be setting up uh, mana spreaders to rip these blocks open. Now, right here, we've got an agricarnation. Agricarnations, and I don't have my book with me, but basically the way this thing works is it acts like bone meal. So basically what it does is it accelerates any crops in front of it in a certain radius. So we've got one, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think that's about the range. And you can see the little bone meal effects going off on it. Now this is kind of an in tight or an enclosed little area. I need to kind of knock this wall out and go one more over, maybe two more, and that'll give us a little bit more room. Uh, I probably will do that here in a bit, uh, but probably not, not at the moment. Now, let me go get our book and I wanna show you guys what I have planned for this little area here. Now, unfortunately, this is gonna take a lot of resources, which we don't currently have, specifically diamonds, which is what I'm mining for, and we're not having much luck with it. All right, and let's go ahead and grab our mana spreaders. Okay, so what we're wanting to do is right here, we're wanting to make a bore lens, okay? Now, the bore lens, the nice thing about it, which is a little different than some of the other lenses, is most of the mana stuff, when it's bouncing back and forth, it can't go through a physical object. So let's drop this little mana spreader right here. And this may be too far. And we're gonna put another one right here. Okay, so we're gonna set you, set this to linking mode, and then we're gonna link it to here. Now let's get rid of some of these trees and I need to find out if this is too far or not. Now I do have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, I believe it was Gasbag that showed me this setup. He uses this setup for him personally, uh, and I, I liked I liked it set up so much. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal it. All right, so you can see. Let's break this block here. You can see that this will go. Where's the breaking spot? Breaking spots all the way out here. So we don't have to worry about it being a little close. So this is the middle. That's one, two, three, and we're gonna set this right here like this and we'll jump and then we're going to set one like this perfect and then that's going to come over here to this one and then we're going to jump well that didn't quite work out how i wanted it to that's fine come on there we go and this one needs to go up and that gives you the idea. So basically this one goes into here, which goes up into this one, which hits this one here. And that one goes into that one, which then shoots back over here to this one, which will go up and we'll do that up till about five or six high. And each, well, not each of them, uh, this one right here will have a bore lens. And basically anytime a plant gets planted, it's gonna chew right through that block. And then this one's gonna go up and then this one's gonna go over and back and forth. Now, the problem that I'm gonna run into is I need to figure out how to replant these seeds. Um, I know the agricarnation won't do it. Now you can see this is stopping. See how it's stopping there? It was going through the plants fine, but once it hits wood, it stops. 
And that's the problem. So, well, I mean, that's actually how it works. We want you wanted to, because then it would drill through this block, go into here. This would drill through this block, which would go into here, and that would drill through that block, back into here, and back back and forth, or vice versa. So, what I've got to do now is I got to make the resources for these. Now, the reason this is so expensive is we need the Rune of Greed. Rune of Greed, if we should click on this, requires two mana diamonds, a wa Rune of Water, and a Rune of Spring. Uh, Rune of Spring requires more rune of fire, runes of water, and it, it gets kind of expensive, but it's not its not too terrible. Uh, the issue is we need mana diamonds, and mana diamonds, of course, require diamonds. So since we're gonna be going six high with this, that means we need six, which means we need 12 mana diamonds. 12 mana diamonds, that's a lot. That's a whole lot. Not only that, but we're gonna put probably three or four more aggrocarnations here uh, to get those set up. Now. Uh, the other aspect of this, where is it? I know there is a plant that will replant. Uh, I forget which one of these it is, but one of these will, I believe, replant uh, broken saplings in the area. I've got to figure that out. I may have to go over and steal it from uh, Gasbag and figure out his setup, which I'll have to do in a little bit uh, later episode. But this is this is our end goal. Now, there are other options that we could do. We could use MFR, but that's going to require power generation. Uh, one of the other options that we may end up doing, if it's easier, is Steve's Carts. Now, if we do Steve's Carts, uh, all we need to do this is we need a, um, where's the hull? We need one of the smaller hulls, which I can't find. Ah, right here. We need a standard hull, and then we're going to need the uh, basic woodcutter, which is right here. But again, diamonds. Every single piece of this needs a diamond. That's one, two, three, four, five diamonds. Now, this is cheaper. And you're like, well, why don't you just do that? Well, the problem is, um, what is it? Greg Tech adjusts rails. So right, let me find the default rail. Uh, is it, damn it. I'm trying to find the default rail and I can't seem to locate it because there's so many different tracks here. Um, one of these, yeah, these are the upper ones. Damn it to hell. Yeah, the wooden track. Either way, all of this stuff requires uh, creosote. So see right here, the ties, they all require creosote, which means I need creosote ovens, which isn't really that bad. It's just kind of a pain in the ass. It, it adds a lot of extra cost. So we actually have to make the creosote ovens. Now we're gonna make the creosote ovens anyway because we're gonna wanna use those to run our boiler, which we're gonna be setting up here in a couple days as well. So I may just end up going that way because it may be easier uh, and cheaper. Because this method right here will really work. Uh, this is gas bags method, but it requires a lot of diamonds, like 12 to 15. Whereas the other method is is much simpler. It just requires a lot of uh, a lot of cold coke ovens. Now that being said, once we get to cold coke, you can see where is it? Cold coke right here. These have double the burn time of charcoal. Now I don't know if the burn time actually affects the um where is it the generating flora i don't know if the burn time actually works with it um uh, passively generate mail while fuel lasts there's a small caveat though and the flame will not burn anything yeah okay so i don't know if this actually works with it or not so if the increased burn time works then this will actually work out better for us because then we can just use cold coke uh and we'll be fine uh but i think cold coke is uh to do cold coke you need Coal in a coal, yeah, you need actual coal. Now, that's not really a problem because we can turn, I believe, charcoal into, uh, well, actually you can duplicate. See this right here? We can duplicate coal. So once we have a piece of coal with mana, I can make unlimited coal, which is great because then we can feed that into our coal coke oven. Uh, but to do that, we need a conjuration catalyst, which requires us to get into Afromancy, which is a little further along. So I am a little worried about that. But just to give you guys another idea, you can see how much mana we've produced in just this little time while I was recording, which is massive difference from this over here. So like I said, I know for a fact I'm going to disassemble this. It's just whether or not we want to use the cold coke method and get into aphromancy, which is what I'm really leaning towards now. Uh, or do we want to go straight into setting up a tree farm? The tree farm is cool, but I don't know if I really want to mess with it when cold coke will do it and probably do it better. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Should we go the method of a tree farm making charcoal and then feeding the endo flames that way? Or should we go the slightly easier route, but a little bit more tech route for Botania 
and just go the coal coke ovens because then we just produce coal from Batania and then we make and it's basically free we'd have basically free power which yeah it's sounding better and better so unless one of you guys gave me a really strong reason why we should go with um a tree farm I think I've just talked myself out in this video going with the coal coke farm Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please slap that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next clip.